Hi guys, my name is Angel and I'm here with the Santa Fe Film Festival and today with me I have three very lovely guests. Uh, my name is Stephen Barefoot, I'm one of the producers of Swollen, a jazz singer. I'm Michael Lippert, I'm the director and editor of Swollen, a jazz singer. And my name is Taylor Arnold and I am the producer of Swollen, a jazz singer. Well, thank you guys for coming to the Santa Fe Film Festival this year. Is this your guys' first time in Santa Fe? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Where are you guys from? North Carolina. Wow. And so how are you guys liking Santa Fe so far? The weather, the scenery, the architecture? Hard to believe. Yeah? I know. We just, we just uh, went around all the different shops and saw the, kind of the jewelry that's out. It's hard not to spend all your money. For people who haven't seen your film, how would you describe it using one word? Inspirational, uh, musical. It is about Carol Sloan, who uh, was a one of the greatest jazz singers of the 20th century, but who unfortunately is not very well known among the mass public. And so she came to prominence in the early 60s, um, just before the British invasion of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and rock and roll really just swept over the country and kind of swept her under the rug and, and so she uh, really kind of was forgotten for a long time um, but her story is one of just pushing through and she had this phrase she would say if you're going through hell keep going and so that was kind of her, her, her motto that got her through all these tough times and kept her singing. Um, it's also about her kind of allegiance to the Great American Songbook, which is many of those great standards that come from early 20th century, late 19th century that are rooted in way back in the blues and um, that, that carried over. And she was really part of a, a small tribe of people trying to keep that legacy alive and keep those songs going. So her, uh, her whole, her, her career and uh, commitment to jazz is kind of what the film is about. Did you guys have a personal connection with the story? I was in the mid-70s, I had a job as a bartender in a sort of an underground jazz club in Raleigh, North Carolina. And my first day on the job, I'm behind the bar and this woman comes up and sits down on the bar stool and said, oh, it looks at me and says, oh, you're new here. My name's Carol Sloan. I'm seeing you here. I'm a jazz singer. And so we met then and it just became fast friends and it's, that friendship's lasted for 50 years, whatever how long this is now. And that's where the inspiration came from, essentially, that the seed. Later on, I had a jazz club in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Okay. And Carol came down and worked sort of as my partner in that club and was responsible for a lot of the bookings because of her relationships and connections with these major jazz artists. If I were booking, I would be calling the agent or the management firm or whatever. Carol just picked up the phone and called Carmen McRae at home or Carly George <laughs> and said, you, you know, you want to come down to New York, this place is great. Mm -hmm. So we became much closer during those years as well. Carol was always referred to almost as an afterthought in, in media, in major media, but she was frequently referred to as the next Ella Fitzgerald, that kind of tag. And Carol just came along at the time where her star was just beginning to rise and take off, at the same time as the Beatles, the British invasion, as Michael said, was coming into the States, and it just kind of kept her in a shadow almost for the rest of her life that she would come out of, and then something else would happen and she would go back under, so. Um, the irony is she knew the Rolling Stones and, and got to meet the Beatles and exactly. travel with them because she yeah. knew their manager. And so she was a fan and at the same time could see that it was going to have an effect on her music. And so it was this, this weird irony. But she, she knew and performed with anybody who was anybody at that time, and yet, Still today, she's very not very well known among most people. And how long did it take you guys? Hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> um, we initially started filming in, in the spring of 2018, not knowing exactly why we were filming yet. But we said okay. we need we, we need to document K 
Carol's story and just started taking the opportunity to film segments when she happened to be where we, we, we could get to her. We'd go to New York and film her performing in an engagement. But the, the film started taking shape and, and forming its story probably four years ago. And so I heard that she passed away very recently. Yes, yeah, she's here. She's certainly here in spirit. And I just feel very fortunate we were able to capture that performance at Birdland because none of us knew that that would kind of be her last big performance. I think she had this feeling that, okay, I'm 82, I'm getting up there, and I want to do this one last great performance in New York and have a live recording that I can put out one more time because it's just what she lived and breathed for. It's what she wanted to do on this earth for all of her existence. And so to be able to, to follow her for that week leading up to it, that really became the narrative thread of the film. The, the modern day leading up to this, this woman trying to do her best to keep it all together with all the ailments of age, a bad back, film crew following her around, all you know, all these things, trying to save her voice while also being interviewed by us. And um, so there was a lot of uh, a lot at stake and we wanted to make sure she had her voice intact for that show and she knocked it out of the park. What we hope audiences will find to be relevant is it, 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 you know take to heart is that we can't take for granted what we might we can't take for granted the, the arts and this, these great venues where we can see artists in such an intimate way. Um, live performance is just so important and it was something that none of us knew would become impossible for a time. Um, so, and, and then just the, the film's message is really about remembering, remembering and preserving um, art, uh, whether it's jazz or not, but jazz is the focus of art. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so mind. after the festivals and finding distribution, yeah, yeah. any we, luck with that so far? <laughs> We've been in conversation with uh, quite a few places, uh, there's been some interest, um, but we haven't locked anything down. So happy to have you guys here. Great to be here. Well, my name is Angel and I'm with the Santa Fe Film Festival and I will catch you guys later.